Good morning, everyone. Sorry for the slight delay and the wrong link. Uh, technology can be tricky sometimes. And this morning, as I was setting up my live, I accidentally hit the date instead of the time button. And I had scheduled my live to go live next December. Um, and there was no earthly way for me to change that. So I had to go in and delete it and start all over again. But I'm here now and it's not December, it's January, 2021. And I have a Valentine's Day project for you today. And I think you're gonna love this project. Um, I am using these little acetate boxes and I've created a cover for them. And with our new, many hearts dies i created a little window so you can see the candy on the inside so that's kind of fun and the many hearts dies has a lot of cool little dies in it um they've got i've got this um, outer one which creates a frame and then over on the side look at this let me see if i can get it in the picture xo 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 on the side it is actually a negative it doesn't create a positive so you can't really string it together very easily but it creates that cute little xoxoxo on the sides of my box so that's not something that you can do readily or easily with anything else i'm also going to be using the new uh, mini stamp and cut inbox machine it is so cute and so light I have actually never used it before. Last night I was using my big machine and I wasn't even thinking about it because my big machine is on my work surface and I it's just always parked there. So I didn't even think about using the mini. And this morning as I was getting set up for my live, I realized that all of my dies should be able to fit through here. This width is um, three and a half inches. And um, the thing I have, the widest thing I have to run through here is about three and one eighths of an inch. So it actually is going to go through here. So we'll try it out. I've never tried it. So this will be like me being you as a beginner um, using this for the first time. So I like, I really have no clue um, what it's gonna be like. Um, but one thing I can tell you is um, when I pulled it out of the box, I think I pulled it out last week, uh, it was already assembled and ready to go um, with my other machine with the regular um, a stamp and cut emboss machine you have to attach the handle this handle was already on here so I just pulled it out of the box and it was ready to go so I love that you know um, and it's small and light portable you know if you ever if we ever can travel again and need to take things on a little trip this will be great but I'll have to see how it works and and maybe this will be a total failure because I've never used it before and I might be totally hopeless at my first time but we'll give it a whirl right we'll see how it goes all right and if you are new to my channel on Fridays I always do a live usually it's a 3d project or it's a fancy fold it's usually something fun and fabulous and I create a project sheet for the project. And so this project sheet is for my email list subscribers. My email list is free. And if you want to get on it, just look down in the description of this video and um, you will find the link to subscribe to my email list. And then on Saturdays, I send out the project sheets. Um, the, the project sheets are nice because it has a list of the supplies, the directions. If there's something really complicated, I usually also include a diagram. Today's is not compl um, really complicated. Um, other than the fact that I have to go in and change a couple of things that I changed out at the last moment, like the die cutting machine and my YouTube link. So that's why I always send it the day after because I, as I'm um, showcasing it for you or teaching you how to make it, um, sometimes I realize that I should have done something in a different order or I had a wrong measurement or a link. So it's kind of my way of testing the project sheet before I send it out to you. So that is the project sheet. Um, 
I already showed you the project, so why don't I flip over to my other camera and I will show you how to make today's project. And I think I have obliterated my comments thing over here. Okay, good morning to everyone who's joined me this morning and thank you. A shout out to Janine who alerted me uh, about a minute to go that my time was wrong and I hadn't even um, brought my laptop over to my workspace yet and thanks to her for alerting me which gave me a little bit of a heads up so I could change the the link and not totally be blindsided as I was getting on and totally confused so thank you to her and I'll talk to all of you guys later because I am hopeless absolutely hopeless at reading comments while I am demonstrating stuff so I would rather talk to you afterwards than um, try and do it during so let me switch my camera over all right and here are my projects I put two different kinds of candy in here the, I like this box because it's versatile you can put whatever candy you want into it so you could make up a whole bunch of these and um, choose candy for each particular person that you were giving it to because you know some people like mint some people like chocolate some people like nuts you know so you can personalize it to um, whoever you're giving it to, but you can use the same box for all of them. So that kind of makes it easy. I do want to mention before I forget, because I always think I'm going to mention it at a, a better appropriate time. I'm using these little um, acetate, three and one eighths inch, inch acetate boxes. Um, they also hold our three, if you create three by three inch cards and you use our little tiny square envelopes, they also fit inside here. Um, what was I going to tell you about these? Oh, they are uh, a really good price. They are, um, if you're in the U.S., they're $6 and you get 10 um, boxes. So it's nice to have these boxes already pre-made. Um, all you have to do is give them a little fold. Um, I'll show you in a moment and put them together. So um, yeah, you can get you can get lots of these little boxes and then you just create the little covers for them. Okay, the other thing I'm using today is our new Lots of Heart bundle. You can buy the stamp set and the die separately, but you'll probably want to buy both of them together. I am using, um, today I'm only using uh, one of the words out of the set, um, but they do work together. Um, like the uh, hearts, they cut out um, so you can create them in conjunction. So that is kind of a nice... Thing to have both of them because they work well together and when you buy them as a bundle you save 10% okay let's put these to the side for a moment I'm gonna prop up my my little sheet here I should mention too uh, right now we are having celebrations so when you spend um, increments of $50 or $100, you can earn a free product. So that is really cool. All right, we're gonna start off by making the cover piece. And for that, you're gonna need a piece of cardstock. It really doesn't matter what color, um, just pick a color, maybe pink or red, or if you wanna go non-traditional, pick a different color. But this piece measures eight and a half by three and one eighths inches. <laughs> And I'm going to bring out my scoring board here. And there's a little trick to scoring this cover that's going to make it just wonderful for sliding. So I'll show you that. So put one of the eight and a half inch sides up at the top. And then you're going to score at three and one eighths inches and eight and one eighths inches. Then you're gonna slide your cardstock just a little bit. So right here on this side, the first tick of here of here on um, the first score indent is at one eighth of an inch. So I want you to uh, slide the cardstock so it is not so it's in between the edge and the one eighth inch mark. So basically, you're moving it over one sixteenth of an inch. So just kind of eyeball it. You just want it a little bit away from the edge here and just kind of in between that first line right at the edge and that shorter little tick line, okay? 
And then once you've slid it there, you just hold it into place and then you're gonna score two more times. You're gonna score at the four and one eighth inch mark and the seven and a quarter inch mark. All right, and that is all the scoring we need to do. out of the way. Now we're going to bring in our new mini, our little mini machine. He's so cute. All right, we're going to give this little guy a whirl. So one thing you just need to keep in mind, I'm going to push him into the viewing area a little bit. Um, one thing we need to keep in mind when we're using this um, is that our strips of paper can't be wider than three and a half inches. So I had a bigger piece um, earlier and I had to cut it down so it fit the width of my machine. So, you know, it's good to have your stamp and trimmer on hand when you do that. We're going to cut the frame first. So take your, um, I'm going to flip this this way because it will be easier for me to set up over on this side. So one thing you'll notice with this mini machine is the base plate is a lot smaller, but it has the instructions right on here. So, you know, me being a newbie today, I took a quick look because I was like, what? It doesn't seem quite the same to me. Um, that's It's a little lighter because this area in here is a little thinner. It won't do like thicker, thicker dies. Okay, so it's just going to do your your wafer thin dies. So you're going to use this plate number one, then you're gonna put a number two plate. These are our number two cutting or embossing plates. Then you're gonna put your die with your cardstock and another two plate on top. So let's put number one down. We'll put a number two down. Then we'll take um, this scallop part. And there's two hearts that look kind of similar in this die set. One has a double line right here, so it's going to actually cut out a skinny heart. You could theoretically also use it right here if you wanted to because it does um, cut out that inner heart that we need, but I'm just going to use this um, regular heart that just has the one um, cutting line on it. So I'm going to put this right down here in the center. We don't have a magnetic plate for this thing yet. So I have a piece of this uh, Glad cling wrap and I'm just gonna help um, use it to position. It's just a tiny piece of it. I'm just gonna help it just to position this piece so to kind of hold my die in place as it runs through. And if I were setting this up to do multiples, I might actually um, put it all on the back of this whole thing so that I didn't have to like move it each time. So, okay, I've got that ready. One thing I've read about the Stampin' Mini is you don't wanna line up the edge of your two plates perfectly. You wanna stagger them a little bit to make it easier to run it through. So that's what I'm gonna do. And it says you need to give it a little shove into the machine. Okay. Let me stagger it a little bit more. We're, we're learning how to use this machine. Okay, there we go. I kind of staggered all three of them a little bit. So now I'm going to run through. Okay, it's coming through. It's a little harder, I must say, to run through than my, um, whoa, 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 whoa. This has quite the uh, power to push through. It has kickback. So when it comes through, it's gonna kick out. So we have to be kind of careful about that. Wow, that was quite a bit of kick through. But this is what I wanted, my little heart. So let's try this one more time. And now we have to cut. Okay, this goes over here. All right, I'm getting rid of my little, sorry, I should do this on camera. These little pieces that are stuck onto here, I'm just removing those. Okay, well, 
Number one, I did not know it would kick back so much, but that's good to know. Now I know for next time. So now I'm gonna put down this plate again. I'm um, aligning them up. And let's take a quick look at this piece that we're gonna die cut now. Um, we want to create a window um, right here and I want to create it on the the um, the square can you see the score lines right here I don't know if you can see them very well I'm kind of trying to look at the window here let me see so here is the skinny score tab on the side then we have a skinny segment then I have a square segment another skinny segment and a square segment Ignore the square segment on the end because that one's going to wrap around to the tab. I'd prefer to work on this square segment that is kind of in the middle, okay? So that's what we're going to be cutting into. So I'm going to put that down. And what I want is I want this window to be pretty central on here. And so one of the things you're going to notice is if you put this heart dead center in here, it's not going to work. I actually, maybe I can show you. So for this one, I die cut this one right in what I thought was the center of my heart. And when I put this on here, um, it is not centered, my frame is not centered. See the end is right here and there's still about an eighth of an inch here. So if you want this a little bit more centered, um, you're going to need to make sure that you put this in the right space. So this heart, if it is three eighths of an inch from the top, it is perfect. The other way you could do it is you take your frame you place it where you want it and then you can make yourself um, some little pencil marks and that will help you decide where to put this. So the cut line is just about a sixteenth of an inch from there so you're just going to kind of place it. It has to be centered on that square and I'm going to double check with my ruler Got a little mini ruler right here and that's about right it's about three eighths of an inch from the top and then it's centered from side to side in that square and then I'm going to put this on here oh you know what I need to stagger it which I am not used to doing so let's do that stagger stagger dagger <laughs> and now we're gonna run through okay, is it catching come on it's not catching let's see we've got it staggered we got this one staggered this one staggered and this one staggered this one right here okay oh and you know what else I think I read I think I read it's better if you try and shove it up from this side because you can kind of give it a push more from this side and it's supposed to catch better hmm. it does not want to catch not at all. Oh, okay, now it's going through crooked. Okay, here we go. That took a minute to catch. Now, I'm going to remember that we had a bit of kickback here. So let's see if this kicks back again. Nope, we're good. All right, so there's my little heart piece. You have to learn how to use things sometimes and this one is a little bit 
little different than the big machine. And it, you know, that's sometimes that's what happens when you're using something new. You just, you need a little time to learn how to use it. Okay, I've got my little XOXO XO, and these are gonna be on the skinny side segments. So the top of the XOXO is going to face this heart. So let me do this once more. I am, it's kind of weird. Oh, I see, okay, I'm looking at the, the logos and the way that they're lining up. And then I'm gonna put this one here. Okay, this is fine now. It's weird how the other one didn't wanna catch and then this one's absolutely fine. Really weird. Okay, I'm learning how to use this. Okay, so look at this. So we've got the little XO, XO, XO on the side. Isn't that cool? All right, now we're gonna get rid of these little shards. And now I'm going to put this on this side. And this one's gonna come over here on the other side. The XOXOXO centered and then I'm going to place this down here I'm staggering them hmm. it is not wanting to catch again ah Oh, that's weird. I kind of, I kind of gave it a shove. I lifted this end up, and I think that actually helped catch the the die. Let's see. I don't know. It was kind of weird. It just kind of lifted it up, and it was kind of going through the little roller. weird how it sometimes catches it and sometimes it doesn't. Very odd. And now my die has shifted. I think I'm going to put it through like this because I think it's going to go through better when it's a little closer to this side. Put it through like this. And I'm gonna move my pencil out of the way. It is not wanting to go through. So, so much for the little stamp and cut and boss mini. It is not working out quite the way I wanted it to. Well, how about we run it through the regular machine so we can show you how it actually runs through. That is very disappointing. Okay, I'm taking it off the thing. I will have to work with the machine and see how it works a little e more easily and I'm gonna have to wait on recommending the Stampin' Cut and Emboss Mini until I can figure out how to properly use it. Okay, so let's look at the regular one. Um, we need this for die cutting. We need the plate number two. And now our plates are, are labeled a little differently on the big machine. So let's put this here. We've got a bit more surface here. And I'm going to put my little XOXOXO on here, centered on the side strip. I'm going to change my links back over to, okay, there we go. Yep, I think I'm going to be sticking with my big machine until I can figure out the little one. See, this one came through much more easily. So it's nice to have a portable machine, but 
until I can learn how to use it then. So that's what your piece should look like. You want the XOXO on both sides and you want the heart window in the center. And then you've got still this block over here, this three and one eighth inch square over here. And that's gonna be the bottom of your project. All right. We will be working with the other machine. So one thing, um, when you're folding this piece, this piece has score lines, but because this is a really delicate area, just be careful how you fold this along the score line because this is a weakened area now because of the die cutting. Um, you might fold accidentally along there and you don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna flip this over and carefully fold over that tab end and I'm gonna use my bone folder to reinforce it. Then I'm going to fold along the next score line, just being careful that I don't bend at the XO, 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 okay? And then I'll do the same for the other side. Just make sure I'm on the score line, fold. And then again on the score line and fold. Okay, so the easiest way to adhere this together See, there's the little skinny score tab, and we're gonna adhere this together so that this big end piece ends up here. And if you do it like this, it will align properly. So just take some Tombow. You could also use um, an adhesive like Terran tape for this. And I'm just gonna put a bead of glue along that skinny score tab, and then I'm gonna bring it together and just run my finger along that tab. And now comes the opposite direction. And so now you have your, your cover pieces coming together. And somewhere I have my frame. Okay. And I'm going to add my frame to my piece. And see how um, this frame is on all the way on the piece. It's hanging over a little bit on the edges. Um, but there's with this design that will that's supposed to be like that. But the heart from top to bottom is completely on this red piece right here. Okay, and that's what we want. All right, so now we're gonna create this little banner right here. And for that, you're gonna need a piece. Oh, I'm grabbing it from way over here. This is three and a half inches by half an inch. And where did I leave my pen? Oh, it's way over here. There's always one thing I leave across the room because I, have cardstock behind me and I do a lot of my designing right here in my camera space. All right, so this one has two different ends and you can choose whichever end you want. I still really like the banner end and I'm going to slide it in to here and give it a punch and into here, this middle slot and give it a punch. So that creates the two little banner ends and then I'm going to take my real red ink and I did a little doctoring of my um, greeting right here um, the greeting originally was sent with lots of heart but I thought like maybe you're not sending this somewhere if you are then you can use the full greeting and it will there's enough room for it to fit on there but I decided I just wanted with lots of heart so I cut, I cut my scent away. I'll just pull it out. I just use some scissors and I just cut it off. I still have both of them. I can still line them up on a block and they'll be the same. I can still stamp the original greeting if I want to. 
but sometimes I doctor up my stamps a bit if there's room to cut in between them and I want to change the greeting a little bit. Don't feel like you can't do that. Okay, so I'm gonna ink that up and just center it on here. And there it is with lots of heart. So then I want to add this across here. Uh, so I want to be careful when I do that not to put any adhesive in the middle. I just want to put a little dot of glue on both of the ends really close to the, the V. So I'll just kind of Spread this across and then hold it into place. Come on. This side wants to spring up. I probably put the adhesive right where there was a bit of break in the scallop. Okay. I'm going to put adhesive down here and now you're going to stay right. So with stubborn pieces, we go in with adhesive again. All right, so now let's bring in the um, little acetate card box. And these are pretty easy to put together. So um, this is folded one direction. So you're just gonna open it up and fold it in the opposite direction. You're also gonna, I'm gonna fold down this tab and then I'm gonna fold down these end tabs and then I'll do the same thing for the other side pull this one in this one in this one in it's hard to see probably because this is clear but these are not hard to fold together at all so I'll fold in one end and tuck in the end tab to begin with and then you can grab whatever candy you have on hand or whatever candy you're going to put in there. I'm going to just use kisses because I have, guess what, I have a lot of kisses. Are you surprised? I'm surprised that I have kisses in the house. I have a lot of kisses. Always because when inspiration strikes, I want to be able to practice my making my design. So I always have a supply of kisses. All right, so you put the kisses in or whatever candy and then you're gonna close up the box. Okay, this measures, I should tell you how wide this is just so you know for candy. This is, it's about just about three quarters of an inch wide. So it's like, it, it will fit like a kiss size candy pretty well. Rolos will fit in here too. Um, it's not going to fit like a Lindor truffle because a Lindor truffle would be too too wide for this box. But like even some of your little bar candy or like a York peppermint patty would fit in here too. So then you just slide it in to your box or into your cover. Works very well. And then you can add a bow. And I just, I like the tool ribbon I tied it into a bow because it's very um, it blends in nicely to most designs and um, it doesn't it it enhances the design but it doesn't take it over so I'll just use uh, a mini glue dot on the knot and then I'll just add it to the top of my box like that and that is how you make this box and I'm sorry that my first foray into using the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine didn't work as well as I had planned. I'm going to have to practice with that and I'm going to have to see um, how that goes before I recommend it to other people because um, I hadn't used it before and um, so you never know how, how things will go. And um, so I, I have heard you have to stagger it, um, but even with my staggering ability, it didn't quite work the way I expected.
But the good news is we still have our big um, die cut machine and it works fabulously. And um, those hearts, aren't they cute? All right, I'm coming back. I'm reading your comments. I am sure you're gonna be talking to me about the mini stamping cut emboss machine. Oh, all right, let's have a good morning, Terry and Janine and Diane and Christine. Um, Christine says I she likes my pretty pink kisses. Yeah, you know what, I had a bag of these kisses and they came in different colors and then I sorted them all out had pink blue and silver and I sorted them all out into bags and so now like if I want to I use pink normally I mainly use silver um, just because that's what most people can get easily especially in other countries um, but sometimes I like to have I just happen to have these on hand and so um, I use them all right, I'm keeping on reading. Uh, Janine says, uh, that was quite a kick. Yeah, that die just expelled. Um, Diane says she's used her uh, mini quite a bit and I've never had that happen. Um, and, and she doesn't stagger the plates, you know? Um, you know what? Um, place the top plate, the for the rest. Huh. I think staggering the plates is what is causing the problem. Actually, I am not sure. I've heard that you're supposed to stagger the plates. Bottom plate, stagger middle plate, top plate extends over both. Interesting. Candace, I will have to try your, your trick and come back and give it another little whirl. You know, it's, it's one of those things that you know, some things work effortlessly and some things require just a little tweaking to make them work. And that's probably what I need to do. But I think it's good to sometimes show how things work out of the box. And so that way you can see, you can see me struggle and you can see how I'm going to try and fix it in the future. And so, but I like that tip, Candace. I will definitely try that. Thank you for that. Um, okay. Teresa says you might need to put the machine on something like shelf liner to help stabilize the machine. Then you can add a little bit more pressure. Wouldn't help to try. Well, Teresa, I will also think about your tip and see if I can um, use that too. Uh, Ver Blue says those are pretty, Brenda. Thank you. And Terry also says um, that they're pretty. They are really cute little um, boxes and they're not hard to make despite how I made it look. You just need to make sure that you place um, the, um, the die in the right spot on the square and then the XOs on the side. Isn't that cute? I love the little XOs on the side. I love that die. So um, this would be just a cute little project, put whatever candy in there. So if you like my channel, you want to see me do uh, kick my mini uh, plates out of the stamp and cut and boss machine again, um, just subscribe to my channel. You'll see my little body floating down around the corner. I think I'm in a pink shirt. If you click on that, you can subscribe to me. And there's also a little bell. If you click on that, you can decide how often you wanna see me. Do you want to know every time I'm on or just sometimes? Um, that a little bell will help you um, choose those options. If you're looking for the supplies that I used today, there's a link down below in the description of this video that will take you over to my blog. On my blog, I have all my supplies listed. Um, also, um, Celebration is on right now. And um, uh, when you spend 50 or $100, or even if you have a really big, big uh, um, uh, spending spree up ahead, if you spend $300, um, the $300 level gets you um, uh, an additional, um, the Punch Party stamp set. So um, there's rewards for, you can choose a reward with every 50 or $100 you spend right now. So that's, it's a nice time to buy something from Stampin' Up because they give you something extra this time of year. All right, oh, I also released my free with purchase tutorial and it's like this little 
Rolo's Heart. This is my latest release. Um, when you spend, when you place an order with me, um, even if it's a small order, as long as it's $15 or more, um, you can choose one of my tutorials for free. This is the tutorial I have, the new tutorial I have available, but you don't have to choose this particular one. I have over 70 tutorials that you can choose. Um, and so this is, this is this month's tutorial. And um, it also comes with, um, as instructions to make the little gift box too so that's kind of cool also if you spend $75 um, this month with me I'm also going to um, send you some pastel pearls um, at um, in February so that's a nice little extra little bonus that you can get with me all right guys I hope you have a great weekend I look for the project sheet in your inbox tomorrow I will be on Facebook um, on Tuesday for a live, and then I'll be back here again on Friday with another um, live tutorial. I hope to see you then. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.